the Independent Investor Channel. It's been a, a short minute here since I've come out with the highly on video, and there's been uh, a ton of information unfold, especially over the last month to encompass the wholesome order. Uh, but there's certainly a couple of things to update as we're uh, marching toward uh, an eventual scale up in production. Uh, we're going to talk about what I think the real impact of the uh, NFI order is, as well as um, the news from this week, which was the collaboration announcement with Cummins. I put all of this information, along with some information that snuck through on Matheson Inc., as well as Christian Christensen Inc., which was uh, a development from the Northwest, if you guys remember from many, many moons ago, um, the penetration in the Northwest market with some um, uh, some um, some beta tests that they had done up there with the hybrid unit. I, I think this is extremely bullish uh, for the hybrid unit itself, which is, remember, going to drive uh, top-end revenues for this year of around two to three million. Um, and it's going to be of interest to me. We're not out of 2020 to yet to continue to monitor those projections uh, in Q2, 3, and 4. Uh, as we close out 2022, good riddance as far as I'm concerned. This has been uh, a real dud in the stock market, quite frankly. It's been the worst start uh, to the stock market in 53 years. Uh, it's been a gangbuster. It's been a, a tough road to hoe as an investor, but this is what we signed up for. Um, this is what it means to be an investor. Now, specific to Hylion, I've been uh, monitoring the price action very, very close. Uh, we went above four just briefly and uh, retracted uh, from that. The stock was not uh, ready to accept new levels. Um, I think with the damage that has been incurred and the correlation that has been rooted into the stock now correlation specifically, um, with Hyzon uh, and Nikola a little more indirectly. Uh, I think once we get these quantifiable metrics turned out, we'll be able to allow Hylion to be uh, evaluated on its own metric. I know that the Hylion crowd uh, is very in tune with the developments of the company, and I chalk every one of these announcements up from the last few weeks uh, as being in that category of the unknowns. I, I think it's incredible, uh, and I said this, when you invest in a company, it, it is not always about what is right in front of your face. It takes a little bit of um, imagination. Uh, it takes a little bit of instinct. And I, I, I can't teach that. Um, I can't teach that to, uh, to a YouTube audience. I can't. And a lot of people will say, well, the stock is down, Ryan. It's therefore a bad investment. That, that's the very lack of insight that I speak about. And, and those people with those criticisms over a specific investment, not just highly on, they may be right. Uh, they may also be wrong. And I think an astute investor needs to really entertain both sides of the argument both sides of the coin. I think here at the low $3 range, again, I've been happy with the slow drift north in the stock price, um, but it has, it has retracted as volatility has come back. At least the update from this week um, has put a little bit of headwind pressure on the stock, but I've been happy with the stock action and its ability to hold in here. Um, it uh, briefly saw the twos and, and quickly went back into the $3 range. Um, I think valuing in this company right now is premature. It's very, very difficult to do with what these guys are going to do with these small steps forward. And I'm going to break down the NFI order in a way that kind of gives you some insight in how I'm looking at what this could mean. Okay, the top end uh, headline was the 10 orders uh, placed by NFI. NFI caught some scrutiny from me as to what they were even doing on the council. And there's a few others that I we just haven't heard anything about. NFI is a player, uh, 4,500 trucks in the fleet, family-owned business for 90 years. And their goal of uh, being above board all the time, I've done a little self-study on NFI. This is a big deal. We'll get into that in just a little bit, but I want to talk about the, the big news, the Cummins collaboration. There was a few things that I took away, and I don't want to regurgitate information, okay? but it is worth speaking about as we are in this phase right now of bridging toward what is inevitably promised to be uh, a 2023 for the ages. And the latter part of 2023, we still have... 
a significant amount of milestones to move through in this bridging phase that I've coined for uh, would-be followers of the Hylion message and the company. Um, I, you know, uh, 18 months away it seems like a long way away right now, but there is some marked progress being turned in by the company. Uh, hirings are never talked about. And I've got one of my individuals in my highly on air crowd uh, that are tracking the new hires. They are ha and have always got an A plus from me as far as they're building out of their team at highly on. If you are interested in that, I try to take that information and put it into the Facebook group um, to try to share that. And it's even something that the discord, I haven't seen a lot uh, of kudos rendered on that. I, I think the, the Discord needs to add it to a topic of interest uh, as we build off of this team of 200. They have filled a lot of very, very technical positions within the company, and they have announced new positions to be filled uh, in, in the company. And I think that's going to be a key component in realizing the, the fabric and totality of this company um, as Thomas Healy is looking to build out the team, I, I think there's multiple things going on at work here with Hylian, and I think it's all positive. I have very ha I've had a very difficult time in the last uh, two years or so covering this company a little bit more in finding negative information. It's amazing to me how there's a lot of people out there that uh, that do, and and I have. I have, and uh, a lot of my scrutiny has come and gone in way of the company being more transparent with what they're doing. Um, they owe it to shareholders. That's a fact, Jack. They owe it. Um, they have to be more forthcoming. And in the last, well, at least the start of the first half of 2022, the fiscal year uh, or the calendar year, um, I give them kudos where I was very hard on the company in the back half of 2021, uh, and rightfully so. Um, that type of um, a lack of transparency has no place in public markets is none zero. And I caught a lot of flack for it. And that's too bad. Uh, and um, where I can be scrutinizing of a company, I can also be very, very accommodative. Uh, and I can be also um, very, um, I can be very, very supportive of, of what the company's doing. And, and right now, I'm, I'm very happy. You know, I'd love to see information every day, but I, I know that's not real, uh, realistic to provide uh, to shareholders. But the information that's been forthcoming, especially over the last month, has been very, very telling. And it's put a few strategic pieces in place that are absolutely worth talking about. The, the announcement from Cummins was that the ISX 12N uh, generator is going to be used. Now, uh, the 12N engine is, is a 400 horsepower engine. It's been used in direct uh, CNG applications in tractors for many, many years. I was able to share with the Facebook group uh, a video on the ISX 12N performance from a fleet perspective very, very telling, and it was from 2017. So just to give you some insight about um, the established nature, this was not built for the ERX, however, being segued into the ERX, um, and I'm super stoked. I couldn't have picked a, a better uh, company. I have a special affinity for Cummins. You guys know that. I've spoke about it many times. Um, I used to be a skiff man in Alaska, which meant that I had my own Cummins engine not two feet from me. Uh, and I had it wide open, full bore towing, beating up machinery like you should never beat up machinery. And that engine kept going. So to put Cummins uh, a, a against the flag of Hylion and, and look to collaborate this thing together uh, only suggests reliability. And it's not just my opinion and my singular uh, you know, um, uh, a case study from my time in Alaska. Um, it, it, Cummins is a world renowned um, uh, product offer. And they have customers that Hylion does not have. And flying the flag of Cummins means a lot more than just announcing the reliability under the hood in way of the genset that's going to be providing the power to the batteries to power the Hypertruck ERX. It goes a lot deeper than that. Um, I think the, the, uh, uh, the news as it fell on the stock market fell on deaf ears. Um, I think just like normal, the, the story has and will continue to be uh, the narrative until it changes. 
um, that Hylion is in a prove it story. And I have no problem with that. I'm not invested in this company because I believe that they're not going to prove it over the long term. But I think that so many investors have been burned by this opportunity. Um, and I think they have very few have failed to see the long term vision with this company. Uh, as um, natural gas is going to be a dominant sustainability factor and pillar in this drive to zero emissions. It's just that simple. And the, the, the talking heads out there that would suggest anything less than CNG uh, being a part uh, of this application uh, is just choosing to be naive about what major industry is saying about this. Look, neither you nor I as YouTube talking heads uh, speak as much volume as a major industry player like Cummins. And I quote, natural gas solutions are an integral part of our journey towards zero emissions. This is coming from Cummins directly. Integrating our engine with the Hylion Hypertruck ERX is a key to offering our customers, our customers, not Hylion's, our customers, a portfolio of powertrains across many fuel options to meet sustainability goals. What have I said for the last two years? I've been on this trip about fuel optionality. It's been the key driver in my bullish thesis on Hylion. Hylion may benefit from some of the applications in CNG. They may benefit from some of the unique applications with RNG. They may benefit from some of the unique applications of hydrogen fuel cell. Once that fuel becomes more available and industry starts to demand that that specific tractor be made available to haul goods from point A to point B, Hylion will benefit from that, okay? And that's not to suggest that some of the BEV applications from Tesla, Nikola, and Hyzon won't also benefit. It's just that I have a hard time believing that they're going to get into that elite class eight space the way that they suggest that they will. Uh, and I'm not going to suggest that they won't either. I think there's plenty of room in this industry, and I think the industry is so large. But that quote right there uh, from uh, Cummins really tells the tale. Now, there was another short stint of an excerpt from Thomas Healy responding uh, on this Cummins integration, and he spoke really, really fast. And if you were paying attention, the piece in there that I thought was the most telling and the piece that I want to pay forward to my independent investor audience that covers the Hylion story from week in to week out uh, is this. Is this. Um, Cummins will help integrate the Hypertruck ERX to market. It will help gain the CARB and NHTSA certification. Why is that important? Here's the telling piece. The ACF and the ACT mandates that we talked about, they talked about uh, on the last earnings call as being super important. This is going to filter those solutions that OEMs can actually make by law for a certain percentage of the fleet that has to be sold by the drop dead date of, I believe, 2025. But these grumblings are happening right now in 2022. That's a few short years away from those mandates coming down the pike. Cummins has helped integrate with Hylion to ensure that they can meet that carbon NHTSA certification to be eligible to be built by the OEMs and therefore meet the mandates of the ACF and the ACT. One is for the OEM and one is for the customers. Guys, I can't stress enough to you how huge this is for the company and investors alike. Sit tight, sit tight. I heard that, and that was the key for me takeaway. Yeah, I, that's great that they're collaborating with Cummins. I believe that this has probably been in the making for a while. In other words, I believe that they probably anticipated that Cummins was going to be their horse. They've just announced it. It's great to know. That's awesome. I'm super stoked that it was Cummins, personally. Um, Cummins was discussed a little bit along this road as being maybe a potential competitor, and I still look at them as being just that, okay? Their 15-liter engine is meant to compete directly with the industry that is having a hard time gaining the applicable horsepower 
from the CNG applications. It doesn't mean that they're a direct competitor of Hylion. In other words, they're looking to address an industry need. And by doing that, that may cut into some of the opportunity of the hybrid unit, especially on the CNG side to su supplement that horsepower, uh, the 120 of horsepower that's needed on the CNG side. Uh, but this, I thought, was very, very telling, and it was Dooner that brought that interview through through Twitter. You guys are going to need to get on multiple platforms. Follow me. I'm covering Twitter most of the time to scour for uh, highly on information. Silent Alert, shout out to you. Silent Alert is probably the best sharer of information and is the recipient of the first response to what I consider to be the retail investing community. Uh, on Twitter. It was the first time that I saw a direct response from Thomas Healy to somebody in the retail community. So kudos to Silent Alert. Keep up the good work. I think that's what we need to do. Uh, this is an exciting opportunity. What else can I say? I'm not looking to, you know, manufacture any type of boost in the, in the stock. There's no reason for that, nor do I believe that that makes any damn bit of difference. I think telling the story through social media from a lot of different perspectives is the key here. And where we didn't have that opportunity 20 years ago, an opportunity like Hylion would have been turned out to the marketplace and nobody would have known about it until they hit the big time. And I think we're in the early innings of a long extra inning game here where Hylion is putting the pieces in place here that are extremely, extremely exciting. So we can check that box off. I'm sure on the next earnings call in August, they're going to talk about uh, that a little bit more in depth. But that is my takeaway from that is to assist with gaining that certification. It's a key milestone from now until that back half of 2023, until that uh, scale up of production happens off of the OEM lines. And I'm going to talk about why that's important here. And I'm going to use the NFI order as a little bit of an example for you guys. So you can really take it home and understand what I'm looking at from a fundamental perspective below the surface. There hasn't been a lot to look at fundamentally, guys. So where fundamentals can supplement the speculation that exists with this company, and there still is a bit that is existing, um, that then it helps immensely. And I look to share that insight with you guys. Um, the final thing that I will mention is, is this a bid to get closer to a potential acquisition with Hylion from Cummins? I, I don't know yet. Uh, if Cummins acquires Hylion, um, our profit potential is going to go down. In other words, we'll own shares of Cummins, which I already do. I'm already a Cummins shareholder. Um, I'm, I'm glad to do so. I'm a long shareholder in Cummins because I believe in their mission. I believe in what they're doing. I love all the machinery uh, producers, to be honest with you. I love Cat. Um, I love Volvo. Um, and I love John Deere. I love them all. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm full-blooded American. I love them all. Um, we invented them. So we'll own them, um, minus Volvo. But, um, I anyway, I, I, I wanted to, to really touch on that. I thought the Cummins collaboration was good. Um, whether or not I think that this is a bid to take over my insights, tell me no, that it is not. Uh, and that's my insight. I'm going to monitor this closely and it's going to really, really surprise me if if um, these two decide to join forces and Cummins just decides to go ahead and get them through the carbon NHTSA certifications and then uh, acquire Hylion. I, I don't see that to be an option for Cummins. Uh, I really don't. I think it's probably more mutually beneficial uh, turning out a collaboration, knowing that their generator is going into the ERX as well as the uh, newly acquired Meritor E axle. So, I mean, they own two of the major components and what is good for Hylion is also going to be good for Cummins. And that is the more mutually beneficial relationship that I actually see as opposed to Cummins taking on all of the proprietary technology and patent protections that Hylion owns under their company umbrella. I just don't see that happening. That's, that's my insight. Uh, we'll be closely monitoring as it unfolds.
Um, the next piece of good news that I want to talk about, and this is why a lot of people were really interested in, in this highly on video. And I, I do apologize for the break. Not really. I did. Um, I didn't move. I'm, I'm back domiciled uh, here in New York City. I'm glad to be here. This is the heart of the Independent Investor Channel. We're glad to be here. It's going to open up a lot of opportunities. I've had a lot of people hit me up and say, hey, you know, I'm downtown all the time uh, from a couple, few CEOs as well. Um, that want to meet up and talk. I'm, I'm always down for that. I, I'm a people person. I don't have a secretary. Um, I, I keep my own schedule. And, um, you know, I, I do this for highly on for free. Uh, and I do it with really zero reciprocation. I've, I've had no acknowledgement to speak of. Um, I've had no reciprocation from the company outside of what was uh, a previous investor relations point who uh, provided me the most uh, um, uh, insight and conduit to Hylian. Since then, I've been on an island. I have no problem. Uh, I self-profess to be an independent investor, and that's exactly what I am. I eat, breathe, and sleep this stuff. Um, I don't need validation. I don't need a pat on the head, nor do I need a fluff on the ass. I don't need that. I do this stuff independently. Um, I pick up my uh, news feeds from a few interesting sources, Business Wire, as well as off of Hylion.com. Again, I always want to endorse for those highly on investors now that uh, can look beyond the $3 stock price and join the Discord group. Uh, that is the best source of independent information uh, out there anywhere in the world. Uh, and it is going to incrementally grow. Uh, once this thing kind of takes off, um, I'm going to take a back seat because my job will have been done at that point uh, because I'm not going to buy into the group think that uh, I think is inevitable. Uh, I think the momentum is already starting with this company and it is being ignored uh, in the stock market currently. It's being ignored. Look, guys, when you get a $90 a million dollar order come through and the stock goes down, um, it's indicative of just uh, poor times in the in the market, and there's always times in the market that uh, are doled out and are hard to explain. Uh, we're going through one of those times right now, and Hylion has been a, a real prolonged uh, uh, downturn and, and an exacerbated downturn insofar as that I think a lot of people more so are probably throwing in the towel as opposed to picking up on the opportunity, which I think latter is the more prudent of a stock move. Uh, I think the risk reward profile for uh, some of these highly on announcements that are coming through in collaboration with some big players like Cummins um, and, and, and many, many others uh, uh, are, are huge. I was driving up to New York and um, I, I was driving the freeway up here and I saw NFI truck after NFI truck, boom, 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 one after another. Um, I did see a lot of JB Hunt. <laughs> now, that would be an interesting uh, outside the Innovation Council type of move to get uh, JB Hunt. Never heard them in the discussion outside just being noted on the uh, original investor uh, presentation. Uh, but to get JB Hunt under the uh, umbrella would be a nice one too, because I tell you, every other truck I saw was JB Hunt, um, NFI, uh, driving for multiple carriers too, really. I, I'm not sure I understand totally. And this is where what the truck comes in, their insights on the trucking industry. I'm not a trucker. I, I openly admit that. That's totally fine. It doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't eliminate me from offering my opinion on Hylion because as far as Hylion goes, I'm a subject matter expert. I understand the company inside and out. I understand what they're trying to do, uh, what their vision is. I understand their spotty roadmap at best over the next two years as to how they're going to achieve that goal. Uh, and my uh, instinct tells me that they will do that. Uh, they will do that in time. Um, and they're only going to scale up and, and march toward what I think is an inevitable fundamental and mathematical reality uh, on getting to that critical mass break even in, um, in sales. Now, here's what the 10 hyper truck orders backed by security deposits mean by me. Inevitably, it's a million dollar order, 35% margin affixed to all of these statistics that I'm going to roll out to you guys. And this is kind of the math metric that I run these guys through. And I want to thank Rick Schnellman. Uh, Rick has been uh, a staunch advocate of the company. He's been a staunch supporter and friend of mine. Um, he's really helped because he knows I'm working on an island here. He gets that. But man alive, the guy isn't afraid to snorkel over to my island and enjoy a rum punch with me every now and then.
and then. And I really appreciate that. A watermelon rum punch, I might add. And these mathematics, these fundamentals that we're looking to kind of speculate on, take into account a few key metrics. Number one, what, how many units does the company need to sell to get to that critical mass break even of around 135 to 145 million cost of, of, of running the business? It's the cost of expenditures per year. Runs at about $140 million burn rate per year. So the question becomes how many units need to be sold to get to that? Now, Thomas Healy will not speculate on this. We can. Um, this is American Jack. Okay, we can talk about these and we have an idea about what the projected margins are going to be. We expect on the low end to be about 23% to start. That's with low volume production increasing to as much as 35%. Wonderful margin range to work off of in the industrial uh, capacity. Okay, about 90, let's say $100,000 of profit per unit to make the math easy at a $35,000 profit margin. That's bottom line. So top end sales of 100, 35,000 on the margin side per unit sold. Okay, so those are the metrics that we're looking at. We've got about a 5,000 unit break even projection here. And the bears of Hylion are going to come in and say, they'll never get there. See you later. I'm going somewhere else. Great. No problem. You could be right. You could be wrong. I don't speak along those lines. I speak along the lines of what they need to achieve. Will they? I hope so. My instincts tells me that they'll far surpass what it is that we're projecting right now and projecting it now this early in the game is somewhat futile uh, but it is absolutely worth the exercise to understand the below the surface to what this top of the iceberg of 10 nfi orders really means to what future business could be rendered if this 10 order is a one-off we're done we are done if nfi orders 10 and they don't like the product okay we are done, okay? Hylion cannot sustain at this burn rate. Hylion is building out to achieve mass scale up, okay? If they can't achieve that, it's game over. They will be an acquisition target. Whether or not somebody will touch them, uh, if they are unable to garner any type of quantifiable interest within uh, the industry, they're done. They are done. The company will cease to exist. Somebody will come along uh, and they will reinvent the wheel because this idea is phenomenal. It is phenomenal to take a gen set, put it on board, uh, uh, and power that by CNG and power a battery pack that powers the drive axle. It's a phenomenal idea. And industry knows this. Okay. Whether or not Hylion is the one, and they are a first mover, and I have said that since the beginning. They will benefit from the first mover advantage, but they have to stay hungry and they have to remain on their roadmap. And I believe that they will. They've outlined very, very crystal clear for those individual investors who are willing to do due diligence on the company, what that roadmap looks like. Are you willing to walk that roadmap with them or not? Be a steward of the company. I mean, it's better for the environment. Thomas Ely says he's interested in, you know, collaborating with Cummins to bring the Hypertruck ERX to market. To do what? To provide, uh, yeah, sustainability goals to the fleet, but to drive toward a, a better planet. To do what we can do now with technology to clean up uh, the number one polluter, which is the uh, trucking industry. And I believe that they can do that. So here, those are the few metrics, 35% on the margins on the high side, you want to run about 23%, you totally can. The disparity between those two margin ranges come from the availability of products in higher volume and getting volume discounts, uh, as opposed to a higher price for lower volume on the components that are put in uh, times the uh, number of components that go into each of the units. Okay, not to get too crazy with you guys, but that's the disparity between uh, the uh, margin disparity. How do I know that? You have to listen closely to Sherry Baker talk. Okay, Sherry Baker is a key component and one of the um, many, many reasons why I invest in this company. Sherry Baker is an all-star. I, I think she's a fabulous, fabulous um, um, uh, 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 part of the management here at Hylion. And I, I think you really need to pay attention when she rolls out uh, her quarterly reports. But with that, here's how the numbers kind of shake out. The 10 
uh, renders about a million dollars of top end revenue, 35,000 of profit. Okay. So I'm going to give you the top end uh, revenue projections. Okay. Revenues are gross sales. Okay. Top end revenues are just sales. It doesn't mean that they make profit out of that. I'm going to try to distinguish between the two. Okay. But I'm going to talk about top end profit because here's the thing. Hylion does not need to turn out profit for many, many years into the future, okay? When that happens, we're talking about a whole different bailiwick here with Hylion.com, okay? We're going to be talking about a company that is looking to expand globally. We're going to be talking about a company that has been integrated and accepted by industry as a viable solution to uh, perform uh, with the specifications that they have declared to industry, we're not there yet. And when we'll be there is somewhere down the line, because here's the thing, that CapEx, that 130, 140 million of burn rate, that should increase over time. So that means more units need to be sold to get to that break even. But here's the thing, what is the magic number? Is it 50 million in top end revenue? Is it 100 million? Is it 185 million? Is it 225 million? Is it you know, what is that magic number of top end revenue that's going to allow uh, the stock market and would be investors to look at this and say, wow, they have accelerated top end revenue so quickly to give some sort of peace of mind that this company will make it. They will be able to expand. Uh, they will be able to rely on this product. They will be able to seek out new uh, and exciting applications for their technology, which I believe that they will. Uh, I believe that they'll be able to roll out a subscription base for their cloud-based computing and algorithmic uh, information and data extrapolation for the fleets, um, recommended maintenance, recommended route tendencies, et cetera, all kinds of cool stuff, really. Um, what's excited me about Hylion since the beginning is they're looking to build a smarter truck. That's all. They're looking to take what has been 100 years of rudimentary mechanical uh, application and transition that into uh, electronic and technological advances into the future. Uh, in other words, can the truck provide information uh, as it rolls down the road? Can we take what is known about known driver tendencies about routes out there and extrapolate that data and, and build a smarter truck to be to drive efficiency into the future. Now, I believe that we can. And Hylion is the player in this space, okay? But the 10 orders, let's just consider it a million dollar uh, order. And I started to think about this and say, okay, if, if NFI ends up um, really becoming sold on the product, and it was interesting to me that NFI was one of the ride and drive uh, candidates that came down to Austin, uh, they were secretive about it. They did not want that information released until the time uh, was right. And the time just happened to be right right now. Now, mind you, this 10 order uh, put in backed by a security deposit uh, comes at a very, very early stage in this to secure build slots uh, for NFI. Okay, so that speaks volumes. But here's the thing. We're talking about NFI, which is a fleet of 4,500 trucks. It's a family-owned business. It's been in business for about 90 years. There's multiple generations of uh, the family in the company. Uh, they um, do everything on the high side, okay? Everything that they do uh, is done with integrity. Uh, there's been employee interviews talking about how good of a company that it is to work with. Uh, and I believe that their sustainability goals are in line with what um, Hylion is looking to provide as a product to them. I do. But if you bumped that up to 100 uh, units, okay, 100 unit order, which represents about 2% of the fleet, remember what the target is for Hylion in this $1 trillion industry. Okay, 2% renders about 2 billion in profit. We're talking about $150 stock. Okay, 2%, scale it back to one specific opportunity with NFI. 2% of their fleet is about 100 units, 100 tractors. Okay, 100 tractors renders about $10 million of top end revenue. Okay, 3.5 million in profit. Okay, that's where we're at with 100 units. And you ask yourself, 100 units compared to 4,500, is that doable? If the Hylion Hypertruck ERX is as exciting, uh, enough to buy 10 orders backed by deposits, 
would it be safe to presume that it's going to be good enough to put those 10 trucks into rigor, mm -hmm. introduce them into NFI's exclusive lines of shipping, mm -hmm. and have that uh, verification and validation completed uh, by the time they make their decision to scale up. Now, whether or not they make another 10 order or they make a 500 truck order is beyond me at this point, okay? Now, remember, Hylion is, um, is, is able to, to help provide that order now with the capacity that they have. They are not able to provide that at a 100 order clip. Remember what I talked about with Cummins collaboration, helping with the ACF and the ACT mandates, right? And the necessity for the CARB and NHTSA certification to be turned out off of the OEM lines. This is where the 100, 500,000, dare I say thousands of hyper truck orders are going to come from once they achieve this certification. And it's going to be a very slippery slope once they achieve those certifications. But 100, is it doable? Some would say no. The bears would say, you're crazy. It's a pipe dream. Okay, it's a pipe dream. I'm going off of data. Okay. And the data suggests whether or not you want to stick your head in the sand or not is that NFI just placed 10 orders, 10 tractors, 10 to introduce in their fleet. I think that's a big deal. Now, what it could mean incrementally for scaling up into a factor of X into the future 50, 100, 250, 1000, I don't know, right? Is really the question here. What it could mean for Hylion is the discussion point that I want to share with you today. Okay. Now, 100 is at 2%. You look at a 4,500 truck and I round it up to 500 units as being 10%. 10% of the NFI fleet alone, okay, represents a $50 million order. $50 million. Okay. Now we're getting interesting. Now, this is one third of the total CapEx that it takes to run Hylion from year to year. Okay. Now, I know that that's top end profit, but we're getting awful close and interesting when we're talking about just one fleet, one, one fleet. Guys, there's thousands and thousands of fleets worldwide out there. Okay. So the penetration does not have to be at a 10% clip. Okay. If Hylion is able to garner 10% of a $1 trillion industry, okay, now, now we're talking about a $1,000 stock. Okay. We're not talking about a $3 stock. All right. And I just want to segue. It's a perfect segue. I was asked Friday on the live stream, Ryan, do you consider your $24 price target for 2022 still valid? 100%. I believe it's conservative. It's a conservative price target. It takes into consideration the fact that the stock is trading at $3.21 now. It takes that into consideration. But here's the thing where institutions will play the game to drive the stock down with price targets of $4, which we, over a short stint, already met that and exceeded it. Okay, Hylion will be above $4 and it will be there in the force, uh, foreseeable short term. I believe that, okay? And then these morons who manufactured a drive to the downside to suggest that the stock was somehow worth $4 because of the quantifiable metrics that were available at the time. They're not wrong. They're not wrong at all, okay? They were just conveniently using the situation that Hylion was in with getting their feet under them to arbitrarily move the stock down south by putting price targets on the stock that they would have never put on when the stock was at $58, okay? And that's what I challenge. I call BS. I call, I throw the red flag. I think it's, it's uh, irresponsible uh, and I think they'll benefit from it. So these price targets come up all the while while they accumulate shares for their own institution in the tunes of millions, okay? I'm a share owner in the company, but a relatively small uh, share owner at just over 12,000 shares of the company uh, in relative terms to some of these big institutions that own these companies, that own these analysts that are coming out with these $4 price targets. So yeah, my $24 price target absolutely stands. Once it gets to 1618, I'll revise up to 38. It's that simple. Because I do believe that this is a $50, $100 stock, depending on where they fall in this sales metric. That is the key here, okay? Now, the last statistic that I want to show, uh, throw out here is what, what it would look like at 25% of the fleet, okay? Let's say NFI is sold. They want to tr transition only one-fourth, 
one fourth, 75% of their fleet is dominated by diesel. Okay. Now remember the ACF and the ACT mandates that these companies are not allowed the benefit of sitting back and just saying, hey, we're going to wait for the technology. We're going to wait for the technology. That time has passed because the technology is getting awful close to being right here in front of their face. So it's not so far-fetched to assume that these folks are going to be looking at, yes, probably multiple solutions, as Cummins alluded to. Okay, Hylion is not going to dominate the entire Class 8 space. There's going to be room for all of the few players that are out there. Not many. There are few. And Hylion is one of those few players. Okay, But to suggest that a, a thousand truck order from NFI in a 4,500 fleet is completely out of the question mm, is somewhat naive. I believe that it is absolutely in the discussion, and I believe it's something that's worth noting, at least for the sake of discussion. So 25 order, now we're talking $100 million of top end revenue, okay? $35 million of, of uh, bottom line profit on those units, okay? But that's with one fleet. One fleet, guys, okay? One fleet times 10 on the Innovation Council times however many hybrid units they sell, however many of those other fleets that they're able to pick up along the, the road. And Hylion has done nothing but prove that those other fleets out there have shown overwhelming interest in securing some of those build slots. Uh, you know, Detmar with their order of, I believe, 300 Hypertruck ERXs, huge. Um, Agility still with their thousand uh, truck order on the books here, huge. Okay. And, and so it just kind of talks about, and I, I want you guys to understand uh, again, to review what I'm looking at here and why I drive those 35% margins on the high end, 23% on the low end. Okay. We're talking about a 4,500 to 5,000 critical mass break even. Okay. So at 5,000 at nine, uh, $90,000 per unit, we're talking about a $405 million gross profit potential. At 35% margins, we're talking about $135 million, okay, of, of, of sustainable costs. So the revenues at about $500 million, uh, more than cover uh, the cost of operations there. The gross profit is going to be enough, obviously, to cover the cost of, of operations. Now, Hylion can start to incur debt when it starts to uh, get to that point. I don't know what they're going to do if they're going to get to that critical point here. This is where the board of directors is going to step in and 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 kind of gauge when that those SPAC dollars have expired and they fully funded their business plan. And they'll be looking into the future to identify how the company can be self-sustaining. And that's the key to me. And that's why I run these numbers, because the key is how many units need to be sold to be self-sustaining, how many units need to be sold to really ensure and put at ease shareholders who want to understand whether or not this uh, company is providing a solution that is going to be accepted by the industry. Okay, We don't have those answers yet. You tell me about a ride and drive and a 10 order, that that in my mind is immaterial, okay? It's immaterial on the surface, okay? It's the below the surface that Hylion has a lot more work to achieve and garner the viability of these orders. And we're just going to have to wait and see over the coming months to understand the response that we get from the fleet demos, okay? These units are going to be put into the fleets and the feedback that we get is going to be insurmountable. I could hardly deliver this video in under 60 minutes because of the valid validity of the information that's just come out over the last two weeks with Hylion. Very, very exciting. I was very excited to share my insights on this uh, specific going on over the last couple of weeks. Very, very exciting. We need to achieve better times, a little bit more conducive stock market, a little bit more validation and a little bit more momentum buildup. But as long as Hylion continues to do the right thing, garner interest within the industry, garner new orders, uh, solidify and build against that order backlog, we will be fine as we step into that 
2023 time period where these major milestones are going to turn out fleet demos, winter validation, fleet demos, uh, fleet information coming back to Hylion and integrating into their units uh, as we step, uh, step toward that um, mass inevitable mass scale up in 2023 with the OEMs. Um, and the last things I mentioned at the top of the, um, the uh, episode today was the Matheson Inc. That was the truck going up the hill using the hybrid unit. I thought that was very, very telling. That also is available online on social media. And then Christensen Inc. Uh, was featured on a local news media up there for receiving their hybrid unit uh, for the very reasons that we've discussed from the beginning to supplement the 120 horsepower uh, to provide a bigger, better, and bigger and better payload, which provides payback for the unit over time anyway. Uh, eventually, with enough payload increase uh, and enough load capacity increases and the ability to traverse terrain that maybe they weren't able to traverse before, the payback is only a matter of time. And I thought those were, were a two kind of undiscovered and undiscussed uh, pieces of information that were turned out from Hylion again in the last couple of weeks. So guys, if you appreciate this information coming through, I'd highly encourage you to do your own due diligence. Uh, join the Hylion Discord group. Uh, be, car be part of the patrons there. Uh, this is the calm before the storm. Uh, us would-be investors that have been doing this a long time. There's a lot of savvy minds on this project, and we will continue to beat the drum as long as we continue to see uh, marked progress from Hylion Holdings uh, as they march toward a more sustainable future by integrating their solutions in the Class 8 space here. Um, with their electrified powertrain solution. A lot of news, was glad to share it with you. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like the content, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. Uh, we put out these videos weekly as well as uh, many other products on the Independent Investor channel to help empower one investor at a time. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.